Hello and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to show you a simple or maybe a simplified proof of L'Hopital's rule. And if you're not familiar with L'Hopital's rule, I'm going to quickly explain it to you and then I'm going to show you a proof. A very simple proof actually that you will always remember because of what you already know. So let me just show you what L'Hopital's rule tells you to do. It says if you ever get a problem like this, um, Let's say you take the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. You, you have to take this limit. Remember that your first attempt at any limit problem is to do direct substitution. So I'm going to take 2 and plug it in here. Okay, so what is 2 squared? It's 4. So that's going to give me 4 minus 4. And that gives me 0. And this is going to be 2 minus 2. So I got the answer 0 and zero. Okay, now zero over zero is the indeterminate form in all of mathematics and you cannot accept zero over zero as an answer. Okay, so it is one of the seven deadly sins of mathematical expressions. So you cannot write zero over zero anytime, anywhere. So when you get zero over zero, you have to throw the answer away or you have to find another way of solving the problem. And typically, you'll be advised to do algebraic simplification, like this. So, I can decide to write this as the limit as x goes to 2 of, if I factor this out, it's going to be x minus 2, and then I have x plus 2 divided by x minus 2. Now, with this kind of simplification, well, I can just check these two out. So, what I have left is just this. So, my next answer is going to be the limit as x goes to 2 of just what is remaining is x plus 2. Now I'm going to try direct substitution again. Direct substitution, if I put 2 here, it gives me 4. Now I have done this without using L'Hopital's rule. But with L'Hopital's rule, I would have fewer steps. I don't have to do so much work. Now, what will L'Hopital's rule tell you? L'Hopital's rule says, when you do the first direct substitution and you discover that you have the indeterminate form, which is usually in this case 0 over 0, what you should do is differentiate the function on top and differentiate the function under. And whatever you get, do the direct substitution. Okay? So now I'm going to say, I'm going to take the limit as x goes to 2, but I'm going to now differentiate the top. If I take the derivative of the top, what do I get? I get 2x. If I take the derivative of the bottom, what do I get? I get 1. Now, what is the direct substitution here? Put 2 here, you're going to get 4. So that's your answer. You see, I didn't have to do all of these. Now, why is this an advantage? It is an advantage because sometimes the algebraic simplifications you need to do could be super complicated with several lines and several steps just to be able to eliminate whatever is causing the problem. So, L'Hopital's rule will save you, especially if speed is what you need. Okay, now, how do we prove it? What does L'Hopital's rule say? Let's state it clearly. It says that if f of a is equal to 0 and g of a, okay, g of a is also equal to 0. Then the limit of this composite function as x approaches a of f of x over g of x, okay? See the two conditions? Because you, now if you put plug in a here and you plug in a here, you're going to have f of a over g of a and it's going to give you 0 over 0. You see that case? So we're going to have a 0 over 0 kind of stuff. But we don't want that. And any time that situation arises, this your answer could be rewritten as the limit as x goes to a of f prime of x over f prime of over g prime of x rather, but g prime of x. Now, if you plug in a directly into this, what you're going to end up with is f prime evaluated at a and f prime evaluated and g prime why do i keep writing that and g prime evaluated at a 
okay? This is only true as long as the denominator is not zero because you see this is gonna give you an undefined expression. So we have to clearly state that, that if g prime evaluated at a is not equal to zero. So we just want to avoid um, the undefined kind of expression. That's the reason we add this clause to it. But what's important is that for you to use L'Hopital's rule, you must first understand that directly plugging in your um, limit point, which is your a, into the numerator and the denominator will give you zero over zero. Once you get a zero over zero situation by direct substitution, L'Hopital's rule should work for you. And how does it work? Just differentiate the function on top, differentiate the function under, don't, do not use the quotient rule, okay? So don't say, oh, this is gonna be the quotient rule, no. You differentiate the function on top, you can see I wrote them as, a, uh, as two different fu functions. So you differentiate the function on top, differentiate the function under. Now do your direct substitution after you get your derivatives and let's see what you're gonna get. Usually, it should give you the answer. Now, if when you plug it in, you still get zero over zero, use L'Hopital's rule again. If you still get zero over zero, use L'Hopital's rule again until there's no more need for you to use L'Hopital's rule, okay? So basically that's what L'Hopital's rule is all about. And I just wanna show you a simplified proof of it. Okay, I'm about to show you that the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x is equal to f prime evaluated at a over g prime evaluated of a, evaluated at a, as long as f of a is equal to g of a and is equal to zero. So direct substitution will give you zero. So f of a is zero, g of a is zero. Now let's see this. Let's write it this way. So this is the proof. Let's say um, we write the limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x. This is what we're supposed to find, but I'm going to rewrite this by subtracting zero from both top and bottom. I'm just gonna subtract zero, okay? So I'm gonna say this is the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus zero over g of x minus zero. I have not changed anything, right? So everything is still what it's supposed to be. What if, because I know what zero is, zero is f of a, and I know what this zero could be, this zero could be g of a, I might as, I might as well write this function as equal to the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a divided by g of x minus g of a because this is zero and this is zero because this is zero and this is zero so now what else can i do to this to take it to a familiar level well i am going to multiply the top or divide the top by x minus a by this okay x minus a and I'm going to divide the denominator also by x minus a so look at this so this is gonna be the same thing as the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a well what you do to the top you must do to the bottom too so I'm going to divide the bottom two by x minus a so it doesn't change anything and that's gonna be g of x minus g of a over x minus a okay now according to our limit laws when you take the limit of a rational function it's the same thing as the limit of the numerator divided by the limit of the denominator. That's the division law, okay? So if I choose to rewrite this, this would be the same thing as the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a divided by the limit as x goes to a of g of x minus g of a 
divided by x minus a. Now tell me you've seen this before. So instead of writing so much, you can just write so short. We can say that this thing on top is the definition of the derivative of f evaluated at a. So this is f prime evaluated at a divided by g prime evaluated at a. And that's our proof. We just showed that this limit is the same thing as this. Done. 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 Let's go home. If this video was helpful to you, make sure you like it, leave a comment in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.